I don't know. I don't know what he's been eating. Anyway, either way, it hasn't ended well. Go. Good. When we get out there, Spiro, the ocean bounces a lot of light up in here. Okay, good. There he is. Good. How you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How far it's gonna be fun. Hey, how fast do we want to? How fast do we want to be going? Because her hair Probably is gonna be going. Probably. Yeah, that's what they want. Yeah, you have to stop. I asked for that to be a part of that. Oh, thanks. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. The exciting thing to me about Kong Skull Island, when you're asked to describe it, is there's a very simple answer for it, which is that it's a crazy and hopefully inventive, fun action movie that takes people out of their comfort zone and sends them on just a kind of balls to the wall adventure where things are beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. But the thing that's really exciting to me about Kong Skull Island is that there's a bunch of nuances to it and there's a bunch of different sort of genres within the movie. There's a bunch of different characters within the movie that all have their own thing going on and they all are sort of plucked from different movies and put into this one um, where none of these people would normally interact. And you know, the, the, the core of this movie to some degree for us is to try and make it as character-based as possible so you're invested in this journey, so you're invested in these people. So as these insane things happen to them, left and right, and as they're confronted with all of these creatures and obstacles and whatever, you care about what's going on. But the thing about Kong Skull Island to me is that it's all of these different things. You know, it is a genre mashup of 70s films and very contemporary films. And, and hopefully we can sort of fuse the, um, the throwback elements and the very modern elements into something that becomes kind of timeless. People come back to Kong for a lot of reasons. People have been watching Kong for decades because it resonates with them on an intellectual level, on an emotional level, on a let me escape level. You know, it, 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 uh, every part of what the original Kong was is the best individual pieces of cinema in a lot of ways. It's great, there's incredible visuals, it takes you to a different world, it, it has things you haven't seen before, it takes you on a journey, you're invested in the characters, and it, it doesn't feel derivative of something that you've seen before. And you're invested in this creature. So it's really the best of all possible worlds as far as 
blockbuster filmmaking goes, we don't want to tell the story of Kong going back to New York. We don't want to tell the version of, and the story of that Kong. This is a new Kong. This is a new story. And the exciting thing became, how do we tell a new story within that mythology? How do we take elements of that character? How do we take the things people loved about Kong? How do we pay, take the things people loved about Skull Island and improve on them and change them and, and reinvent them not for reinvention's sake, but for a reason that solidifies why this movie should exist? Why people can say, I'd go see that movie. And that's where the 70s comes in. That's where Landsat comes in. That's where Vietnam comes in. That's where all of these things come in. And we just fundamentally are trying to treat our Kong in a way that honors what came before it, but paves a new path. All the time in Hawaii and Australia, the actors consistently come up to me and they sort of say, this is beautiful. This is one of the prettiest places I've ever seen. And I agree with them, but my perpetual response is, wait until we go to Vietnam. Just, I, I, I've now spent kind of a month of my life scouting Vietnam, discovering it, falling in love with it, and the places there are, they're just spectacular. Like, it, it, I'm almost at a loss for words to describe how special that place is, and I just keep saying to the actors, wait until we go there. Hi Lisa, here with some interesting movie extras facts for you. One of the earliest animation techniques was stop motion. It was first used in the late 1890s. Notable uses of stop motion include King Kong from 1933 and the skeleton skirmish in Jason and the Argonauts from 1963. Now, Toy Story, the first feature-length animated film to be created with CGI, generated 1,000 gigabytes of data and required 800,000 machine hours of editing. Are you an animation movie fan? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to always be up to date with all the latest releases.